Well, as they say, when it rains, it pours. Not only did my computer go out on me recently, but I also lost my regular photo studio lamp and I replaced it with this ring light, which <laughs> on hindsight isn't such a good idea. So I'll go through the rest of the video like this. So anyways, I wanted to share with you my latest acquisition, courtesy of my cousin in Michigan, who sent me this Scott Junior International postage stamp album from 1935. The International Junior postage stamp album is a little brother to Scott's multi-volume International album or what's referred to now as Big Brown because of the uh, brown bindings that they came in. And this thing is in pretty decent condition. It's got some wear and tear on it. As you can see, the, uh, the cloth binding has come away from the spine, but it's He got a little wear there. Got some a uh, little bit of toning. Uh, pages aren't too bad. You got tanning around the edges. All in all, though, it's still in uh, pretty solid condition. It's certainly usable. There's no. Uh, Loose pages, you can see by the looking at the edges, there's no pages sticking out. So all the pages are firmly in place. There was one, one spot I found just in Guatemala where got a little bit of a tear affecting a few pages and then the tears got dog-eared. No biggie, I'll straighten that back out. Put some scotch tape over it. No, no scotch tape, just kidding. So, taking a look at it, we've got the International Junior Postage Stamp Album, which provides spaces for 31,000 varieties. Fully illustrated with more than 7,000 illustrations. And it was designed and written by Teresa M. Clark. Teresa M. Clark may not be a name that's familiar with you. It wasn't familiar to me. So Teresa M. Clark was the wife of Hugh M. Clark, who was the general manager of uh, Scott Stamp and Coin Company at that time. And in 1938, Hugh and his wife, Teresa, bought the Scott Stamp and Coin Company. They got rid of the retail stamp and coin business and reorganized the rest of the firm, the magazines, the uh, catalogs, the stamp albums, under the name Scott Publications. Teresa was Hughes' co-editor and she had a major influence on the organization of the catalogs. And they owned the company until 1946. So taking a closer look at the catalog, the beginning section is uh, maps of all of the continents, starting with North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. Then we go right into the U.S. And at the top, they give you, there were uh, labels available with, of course, you know, you've seen this all on uh, 
even albums up to this date. They give you labels for the country flags and coats of arms, and they had spaces for, they had labels for uh, prominent uh, people from that country, Washington, Lincoln, Grant. And while the while the album is called a junior, it's definitely not a kitty album. As you can see, it goes all the way back to the expensive first stamps of the U.S. from 1847. Well, it's got the Franklin. It doesn't have the Washington, though. And they include... Where's my finger? There it is. <laughs> they include Scott catalog numbers for the U.S. stamps, anyways. However... They are of not much use these days as, the, as there have been uh, changes over the years in the numbering. And uh, this stamp I noticed is in the wrong place. Notice there aren't too many stamps. There's one Colombian, the most common one you'll find out there, a used two cent. And it goes through 1894's Trans Mississippi, Jamestown Exposition. Oh, there we get a few more. It looks like they got a pretty good start on the Fourth Bureau issues. Fourth Bureau referring to the uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing who <clears throat> took over from the American Banknote Company, Continental Banknote Company, of printing the U.S. stamps. And this definitive series was the fourth series that was printed by them. So that's a, that where it gets its name, the Fourth Bureau Series, or the Fourth Bureau Issue, also called the Series of 1922. And strewn throughout, there are loose stamps that have fallen off of their mounts. If they ever were mounted, who can, who knows? Oh, well, here's, here's some more. Well, that obviously was not mounted <laughs> in the album. Here we have the Washington Bicentennial issue. And then... Uh, Airmail stamps. Like I said, this is a 1935 album and the issues do go up to 1934. And the back of the book issues are covered also. We got parcel post stamps, official stamps, and postal saving stamps. Then we have the postage dues, special delivery, more postage dues, offices in China. And then you have <coughs> A lot of spaces for cut squares from uh, from uh, stamped envelopes. Instead of saving the entire envelopes, the collectors would just cut off the corner stamp from the stamped envelopes. Another page of cut squares. A 
fact, it looks like they give quite a bit of coverage to the cut squares. Another page. And then letter sheets. Official envelopes for the War Department. Telegraph stamps. There we go. And then we get a few revenue stamps included. Two spaces for playing card stamps. Then it also has spaces for proprietary revenue stamps. Proprietary stamps are ones where the dies were designed by the companies themselves. They're also called match in medicine stamps because they were the main uh, users of uh, or creators of uh, the proprietary revenue stamps. Then also wine stamps. All right, looks like we're out of the U.S. now, except for this this last page. And as you notice, the pages are double sided. And one thing that I wonder about, though, this book is already pretty thick. I wonder how many stamps you can put in here on both sides of the pages, you know, adding that much more thickness to it. How many stamps, how many pages are can you fill before this, <laughs> this album just starts bulging? Like I said, this is a fairly sparsely populated album. There aren't even uh, hinge marks, so it's not like the album. It's not like the stamps have been removed either. It does have a few. Uh, Fairly densely populated countries. Looks like Argentina's got a few. Austria. Things pick up again in Bavaria as far as quantity of stamps. Start to find a few more again here. And then one thing you'll notice, besides the double pages, that they share, pages will share countries if there's only a few stamps. So Bavaria ends on this page, and then Bahrain is covered with only one, two, three, eight stamps, and then Basutoland with five stamps and a couple of postage dues. And that would be, of course, to cut down on the number of pages, especially since the very next page has another couple of shared countries, Batum and Bechuanaland Protectorate, as well as the next page. Belgian East Africa shares a page with Benin. Belgium's got a few stamps. Parcel post stamps. 
I'm actually quite fond of parcel post stamps of Belgium. A lot of them have train themes in the designs. So I've got a good start on those. Coming into Canada, again we get a little more populated. Coming into France now. There's the sower. Uh, Not surprising to see the Western European countries with quite a, quite a few stamps, relatively speaking, already in the album. Let's see, let's, there's Germany. Let's see what's up with, oh, there's quite a few in the, <laughs> down in the, uh, between the pages. Evidently, whoever, uh, I don't know if it was my cousin or whoever he got this from because someone, someone else's name is signed on the, uh, on the fly leaf. So, looks like they would sort their stamps and then just toss them in between the pages and for when they can get to them later. See, there's some more. Yeah, like I said, you haven't seen any loose pages, nothing that's been torn, torn out or missing. All right, let me just flip through this real quick. We could be here all day looking at country by country. Oh, Switzerland. I like Switzerland. Let's see what we have. Sweden's got a few. Romania. And Norway. So that's my 1935 Scott International Junior album. It's going to alter my collecting habits in certain ways. Uh, I'm not really a worldwide collector in that I don't just buy, you know, kilowares of worldwide stamp and then fill as many spaces as I can. Basically what I do, I pick and choose. I find certain uh, sets. I find certain sets from certain countries that I like and then just go after those and make uh, album pages myself using Album Easy or I print out uh, the Steiner pages. However, with this album now, uh, that'll probably change. I think it might be fun to fill in as many spaces as I can, especially since it only goes up to 1935, so it's not a big burdensome chore there in that regard. I will limit it to the uh, cheapest stamps because as you saw the pages are tanning indicating that the paper is acidic. So I really don't want to put expensive stamps in there that you know could become damaged. Although if they're in showguard mounts that's giving a certain amount of protection anyways but still I'm going to limit this to the uh, to the least valuable stamps and put my more valuable and more desirable sets into my acid-free homemade album pages. 
So I'll be filling this over the coming months and years, and I will update you periodically and give you a look at how things are going. So I hope you'll stick with me and follow my progress. Thanks for being with me today, and until next time, happy stamping.